again for everyone that's joining us. Thank you for joining us this evening. We appreciate it for our ninth episode of From the Ground Up, Up in the Clouds, Cloud-Based Imaging. As many of you probably know, my name is Nicole Perry, and I'm joined by my colleague, Maria Fortes. I'm also joined by my colleague, Alan Zarelli, who would be a first-time panelist here at From the Ground Up, and then, of course, special guest, Wayne Anderson, the VP of Business Development at TigerView. A couple of quick house cleaning items. As I mentioned earlier, your videos and your cameras are intentionally turned off. So if you do have any questions that you would like to submit to us and have us answer live, please put them in the Q&A or use the chat feature or the other option would be to raise your hand and one of us will be able to unmute you and go live from there. And of course, I'm sure everyone's also curious as to, hey, how do I get the Grubhub gift card? So at the end of this, you will receive your Grubhub gift card. It will probably be 30, 40 minutes-ish. We don't want to keep you past the time that we had allotted. So we will give you that access code, but please note you will have to provide a U.S. mobile phone number and you will have to have a practice that resides within the United States. Now, with that being said, we can jump right into it. As today, we're going to be talking about the cloud versus the server and understanding the key differences between them. Why choose the cloud? What are the benefits of using a cloud product compared to something on-premise? And of course, cloud optimization and how to get the most out of your cloud-based solution. And with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Dwayne. Thank you so much, Nicole. And I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be uh, part of your uh, uh, webinar here. And uh, thank you uh, for uh, everybody that has joined us so far. Um, so you may be wondering, uh, what are the differences between having your imaging and data in the cloud versus a server-based or traditional system? So let's first take a look at that. Alan, uh, can you give us a rundown on what a, a traditional server-based uh, setup looks like? Absolutely, Dwayne. Um, and this would be um, setups that people would probably be most familiar with, right? There, there tend to be um, the most common uh, for older dental offices, these server-based setups. Uh, basically, what a server compared to a cloud, when you're using a server-based system, you're going to be locally storing your data on a server local in your office. Uh, in doing that, uh, it does require data backups. Generally, most people do that with an uh, from an additional third party, like an IT firm, um, and certainly would require routine maintenance to keep the uh, hardware functional and the software with the hardware up to date. Um, and as you know, Dwayne, there's almost always a cost associated with backups and routine maintenance. Uh, the other issue with the server-based setup is access to data offsite. That would generally require the ability to remotely connect uh, to a server through another third-party software like a uh, team viewer. Uh, Dwayne, why don't you give us a breakdown there of, of what it looks like when you're using a, a traditional cloud setting as opposed to a server? Yeah, so uh, I mean, basically cloud is, uh, you know, is your images and your data stored on a server that is in the cloud, that is actually hosted by a big company such as Amazon, um, Microsoft Azure, IBM. Um, because your data is stored in the cloud, it's accessible anywhere that there's an internet connection. So it's, you know, you, you're not no, no longer limited to only being in your office. Uh, a cloud system also gives you um, a HIPAA internet require or HIPAA required backup, uh, which is a, you know, actually a, a requirement by HIPAA. Um, and the benefit of that is it, it takes the liability off of the practice and it actually falls then on the hosting company. So you know that's important to you know to think about as well. In addition, security is greatly increased uh, with a cloud-based system um, because the security updates, the patches, are all done automatically without your time and your money. Um, no need to have an on-site server. No, uh, so the capital expense that goes along with that, along with the ongoing maintenance costs uh, with those as well. Now, Alan, I think you uh, had a story uh, to tell about your father who was a dentist, didn't you? Yeah, Dwayne, and I, I appreciate the, appreciate you bringing that up. Um, you know, as, as someone who kind of grew up around the dental business, and this is going to date myself a little bit here, so I hate <laughs> to do this, but, uh, you know, I recall a time when uh, most dentists were using uh, film, right, to, to capture x-rays, my father included at the time, and I remember being able to develop film uh, from my high school photo class uh, at his office, and, and I recall when he switched to digital, when I saw the digital uh, imaging become a, uh, a part of dentistry, you could just really see that's where this industry was headed, right? It, it, you didn't have to be a smart person to see that's where everything was going. Uh, that's really the way I talk to clients about the cloud and what that means, you know. Uh, these server setups are kind of becoming a thing of the past, and, and everything really is transitioning to the cloud. Um, 
And, and why don't we take a look at some of the benefits then of, of these cloud-based setups? And we can start with uh, accessibility. Uh, Dwayne, what do you run into when, when you talk to clients about uh, accessibility in the cloud? Yeah, just like the uh, name, the name uh, you know stands for accessibility is access to your information. Uh, because it's stored in the cloud, you are no longer tied to the office. So whether you're sitting at home with your uh, with your son in your lap as the picture displays, or you're uh, you know on your phone, or you're at a conference, or on vacation, you have access to all of your images and all of your data without having to use uh, you know a a, a third party software called you know go to my PC or remote desktop or whatever the case may. Be. So again, having access to your to all of your images and your data from anywhere is a huge benefit of a cloud-based system. Um, in addition, with that accessibility, uh, uh, gets into with Tiger View gets into the open architecture design um, of being able to support and capture from all 2D devices, whether those are sensors, panoramic, cephalometric devices, uh, intraoral cameras, um, again, open architecture, being able to you know, receive images from multiple manufacturers and multiple devices uh, within a practice, even within a, the same computer. So that's a, a, a big uh, benefit to, you know, as you're picking a cloud-based system. Also uh, something that's unique to TigerView is the fact that we have both local and cloud storage. So we have a local shared folder on your network that your images are captured to, uh, and then those images are also automatically uploaded to the cloud. So it's, you basically have the best of both worlds and you have all of your information available when you're in the office locally, uh, but when you're away from the office or at, a, at another office, you have access to all that image as well. Actually, I briefly want to touch on the part of accessibility because I mean, Alan, Maria, Jackie, you can probably agree or disagree, but I would assume disagree or agree on this one. I typically work with groups. However, I'm seeing a need more and more, even across the solo, the individual locations, that they want the accessibility to work from home simply because they're coming from the Gen Z millennial generation and everything's accessible at their fingertips. So it's not just groups looking from like, oh, I wanna access it from a centralization perspective anymore. Now it's, hey, I wanna work from home. I want, I value my time. I want to work at home, finish my clinical notes, not be stuck in the office until 9 p.m. at night. And right. again, feel free to agree or disagree. Yeah, no, you know, Nicole, I got a quick story on that. You know, we working with a client basically who, has an office in Midwest somewhere, but their billing person is actually in Seattle. And the reason being is because once again, with respect to the great resignation, um, it's really hard to find people nowadays that really knows the industry. So with that being said, being in the cloud, you know, being able to work remote and having accessibility, it makes it so much easier for those, you know, providers, if you will, that are looking for experienced experts that are in billing, um, and, and, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Emery, I think you bring up a great point because I think that almost leads us into the second point, which is scalability. Right. Whether that's from multiple practices or from a centralization aspect. And Dwayne, Alan, I did not mean to interrupt. I apologize. So I'll hand it back to you guys. No, we're- That's uh, great. It was a great point, Nicole. That's mm -hmm. I, I, the nail on the head there with the accessibility. Yep. That's possibly, if not the, the, the biggest uh, key for these offices, it's certainly the, the, one of the biggest uh, immediate benefits that, that I generally see with clients when they make a switch to the cloud. Yeah, and as far as scalability goes, uh, um, obviously first and foremost is, is as practices grow and expand to you know second, third, fourth, fifth uh, locations, uh, the, the ability to share records and share information between the offices easily, simply, and you know, right through your your uh, you know you know practice management and imaging software is, is key and is crucial. Now, as far as uh, um, being able to uh, centralize things and that type of thing, Alan, do you have a couple uh, stories that you want to uh, tell about that? Yeah, Dwayne, well, when it comes to centralization, you know, that is, is another key point. And I, Nicole just kind of touched on some of these things, but um, the ability to, as, as practices scale and, and add locations, uh, being able to create specific billing centers to be able to have people working out of, not having to have people in the office working on those types of, uh, those types of tasks. And even as they grow at an earlier stage, right, being able to have the ability to remote treatment plan or schedule uh, in the case of, for example, we recently, I, I talked to a client who had a uh, cancellation because of a pipe or had to cancel a day because of some, some uh, building maintenance issues, a pipe burst. They were able to go home and work from home and reschedule that whole day of patients, contacting them, being able to do that from, from the home. Uh, and certainly as, as Maria touched on, the, 
the issues with staffing that are industry wide right now, being able to have those remote employees uh, to to do those functions uh, certainly is going to be a a uh, a real real benefit for uh, for especially when you're starting a new practice. You know, being able to to get people in that uh, um, uh, in that way. Um, you know, next I, I would like to kind of touch on security um, here, Dwayne. That's something that. Uh, is generally something that people ask me a lot about, you know, what are the, uh, you know, concerns with security? Is cloud safer? Is it less secure? And, you know, what I tell people uh, when I'm talking about the cloud-based setups, you know, is a lot of the security, you know, in the case of a cloud-based uh, software, right. security is tied directly to the storage company the, the provider is using, right? Um, so like your big boys, like your Amazons, your Microsoft Azure's or your IBM's. Um, when using services like that, uh, in my experience, your, your data actually becomes about five to 10 times more secure uh, than if you're using a local server, right? I mean, it's just, it's just easier. Uh, it's just going to be, it's more difficult for uh, spyware, malware to attack a cloud-based system like that. Now, if they're using a cloud-hosted service, uh, security certainly can be more of a concern, uh, right? Because you're relying specifically on the company hosting your data uh, for all that security coverage, all the maintenance on those servers. Um, so when investigating these, these cloud setups, it's really important to clarify uh, with the people you're talking with, um, are they truly cloud-based or are they merely cloud-hosted? Um, and I know for those of you doing your homework, it, it may seem uh, redundant there, uh, but really there are there is a difference. I mean, the cloud-based system would be like you're using the the Amazons and Microsoft Azure's, the IBM's of the world, the true cloud systems say they, main, they maintain large server farms and they maintain that data uh, with their own in-house firewalls. Uh, when you're using a cloud hosted service, you do end up taking on a little more risk, maybe dealing with a company that's uh, hosting those servers local to their office and maintaining them. Um, so certainly Alan, that- I'm happy you brought this up because this is such a common question that I'm getting. I have an act, one of our clients made, a joke, which I thought was quite comical. They were like, I might as well just serve, store my servers at your house, Nicole. And they're probably more well protected because you never leave. Cause I work from home. So it's actually true. They probably would be protected me just sitting here all day, every day. Like that's right. a fair statement, but they, like, they understood what the difference was for those who don't. It comes up truly at least once a day, I think. It, it, it really does. And I think it's, it's important for people to understand the difference because uh, cloud is not always cloud as they say. Right, you want to be really aware of, of whether it is a cloud, truly cloud-based system, or is a, uh, a company just hosting that data and maintaining that security uh, themselves. Now that I think of it, maybe I should be slightly offended that Ryan told me I never leave my house, but that's okay, Ryan. It's not a big deal if you're listening. <laughs> it's fine. I really don't, but thank you for reminding me. I appreciate it. <laughs> and aside yeah, from I that, I think we kind of wanted to talk about redundancy. And that's another big component to the security. I think it goes hand in hand with security at the end of the day when we're talking about cloud-based, right, Dwayne? Or am I completely wrong on that one as well? <laughs> Absolutely, Nicole. You uh, you are definitely right, and uh, there are there definitely is some uh, kind of some overlap between security and redundancy. Again, you know, because we're talking about um, you know the, the the peace of mind uh, of uh, you know having all of your information stored with you know one of those big boys like Amazon or Microsoft Azure or IBM. Um, those are multi-million, if not billion-dollar companies, and they have multiple redundancies on, on their own network. In addition to that, we also have a, a re redundancy with with TigerView um, that actually protects you against you know internet outages. Um, so I mean, literally, if the internet goes down, whether it's your modem goes down, your router goes down, the internet uh, um, you know service company goes down, whatever the case may be, with TigerView you're able to still take images, you're able to still view images that were captured in that office uh, without any internet connection. Once that internet connection does come back up, it's going to automatically upload the images that you know you've taken in, into the cloud. So it's a, a you know hybrid type system. It's the best of both worlds in that you have local you know your performance, local reliability, but everything is is stored both in that local folder and in the in the cloud. So it really gives you a, a lot to, less to worry about when you're talking about an internet connection. And again, you know, the peace of mind of being able to um, you know, have the you know, big company take care of you know, storing your data on multiple servers and also um, the HIPAA um, compliant backup that's included. So again, HIPAA requires that you have a backup that is offsite 
to your practice. If you have your, your data in the cloud and it's providing a backup, you already have abided by the HIPAA guideline. So that takes that off your plate. Right. And, and you know I think Ray and I on our last webinar, we can speak to right. what those HIPAA yes. fines look With, like. I was going to say that same thing too, Nicole, because that's one of the things that when, when we talk to clients, a lot of them ask, you know, about HIPAA, where is this stored? Are people able to, you know, be able to get my data? And I'm glad that you're bringing this point up, Dwayne. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because I don't think anyone wants to be slapped with a two hundred fifty thousand dollar <laughs> fine. I think was one of the ones that they talked about yes. on last time's episode. Mm -hmm. And like I said on that one, we need to learn from people's mistakes and let's not follow in the same pattern. Let's not make the same mistake twice. Yes. Yes. Now, Ellen, uh, I think you wanted to share a little bit uh, yeah, about uh, you know how things integrate with CareStack and such. Yeah. You know. Dwayne, I did want to touch on this because being able to optimize your imaging software in the cloud uh, is something that, you know, not a lot of people maybe are considering. And it's important to note uh, two differences, the difference between what we would call a direct integration uh, and what a bridge is, right? And just to explain this for, again, for those of you doing your homework here, um, a bridge is really what it pretty much self-explanatory, right? It's a bridge that would allow um, your practice management software and your imaging software to talk to each other. Effectively, a bridge works one way and generally only allows the practice management software to share patient information to the imaging software, not allowing the imaging software to share images back. Um, now, as you can see on this image here that we have up, uh, this is uh, through our care, our care stack and Tiger View integration, which is a direct integration. And in the instance of a direct integration, not only can your practice management software share patient information, ID numbers, names, birth dates, those types of things with the imaging software, but the imaging software can actually share images back to the practice management software. Now, what, why that is so key and why that is so advantageous is because it, it takes away the need to toggle between two softwares to view historical images that have been captured, right? As you can see there in, in, in this image, um, you're able to see past images right out of the care stack chart when you're using a direct integration like we have with Tiger View. Uh, now, if you want to get into the ability to actually view and manipulate, right, what does that look like? Um, you know, it's great to be able to see those little thumbnails, right? But how do we actually, uh, are, do we have to toggle back and forth to, to manipulate images or to, to view them at a, at a larger space? Um, the answer to that would be no, right? We were able to access, click on a single image and through a secondary viewer with our direct integration, pull up an X-ray image like you see here and we would be able to do uh, you know, all your typical manipulations, uh, brightening, sharpening, darkening, labeling, uh, spot enhancing, uh, all of those type of things that, that make it easy for the clinician. Now the, the key point there is you're able to do this from home the same way you access your practice management software, you would have access to those images. So if you take an emergency call from a patient and need to view historical, um, historical images that have been taken or you want to see the previous they were in the other day, you want to see what those PAs or those bite wings look like, you would have access to them. And that's certainly a, uh, a very uh, uh, advantageous scenario when you're talking about these, being able to optimize and put these pieces together and make them fit the best way. Now, yeah, but, Dwayne, maybe if you go I'm ahead. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, but speaking about accessing remotely, you know, we had a client one time, um, doctor was in, in, in Hawaii, um, surgery patient, if you will, something had happened in between and he was able to, you know, access the, uh, the, the, the patient's x-ray right then and there and was able to talk to the general dentist about, you know, this is what I've, I've been able to extract. There's nothing that's left, um, you know, in, in the tooth, if you will, into the bone. Um, and it was ease for him is what he's told me his experience. Well, sipping a pina colada, I would hope. <laughs> no. <laughs> Instead of having to like log into a VPN, you know, and having to like go through those types of security um, portals, if you will. And I would imagine, Maria, he was probably able to do that from his cell phone, not even having to go find the business center of the hotel, right? He actually did it through his iPad. There you go. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's certainly the real advantage. Um, to be to these when you have an optimized cloud setup like that when you have pieces that are that direct integration and not just that that one-way bridge something i love is the fact that people are becoming so techy that they just carry around ipads like i know i carry my laptop almost everywhere i go i essentially am carrying a diaper bag everywhere i go because 
need your laptop or people just, yeah, they just whip out iPads, laptops, like, right. Like no big deal. It's like if you're not carrying one, that's now weird. Yeah, I know. <laughs> right. Agreed. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, Dwayne, maybe, maybe you could speak a little bit to, to kind of what Tiger View looks like specifically with some of these optimizations. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm mean, just like uh, Alan mentioned on the previous slide, uh, you know, when you open up that viewer window, you know, you have all your tools that you are all familiar with and, and comfortable with being able to very easily adjust the brightness and the contrast, um, you know, very easily being able to annotate or rotate an image if it's if it's oriented incorrectly. Um, we have uh, the ability to draw circles and put text, uh, measure, magnify, in invert or negate uh, all those you know fun ones. And for the psychedelic people, uh, we can colorize an X-ray as well if you like that tie-dye look on your X-ray. Um, <laughs> Again, this slide uh, really uh, goes over the fact that we are open architecture that you can you know, not only acquire images from multiple sources, but you can also view images that are obviously captured with three different devices on one screen. Uh, you can toggle between a full screen and a, and a, a layout view like this. Um, in addition, you can also do a comparison. Uh, if we take a look at the next slide, uh, you can see a very easy way of comparing two PAs or two bite wings side by side. So if you have one that was taken you know, today and one that was taken, say, six months ago, it's very easy to see the progression of what's going on with that particular patient's tooth uh, because you're able to do a nice and easy comparison and you still have all the tools uh, like we, we specified on, the, on that last slide. We also and have Dwayne, I just I, I would like to just jump in there, Dwayne, and, and comment just as well, because I think it's important too that you use the phrase open architecture. And, and to people understand what that really means, that that so many systems out there are closed and require you to use a certain brand of sensor or a certain brand of intraoral camera, right? And and using an open architecture system, I always tell my clients is is you know, it's the best because you're able to put, it puts the ball in their court for the purchases they want to make for that hardware, right? They can really go out there and, and shop and see what's, what's going to be the best thing for them. Yeah. And I mean, the, the key is that I like to look at is, is, you know, let's, you know, why don't we give the choice of the hardware that you're going to use to what's going to be best for your practice, not what's going to work with your software. You know, we, I like to say that we're, we're a sensor agnostic. We don't care what sensor it is. We don't care who the manufacturer is. Uh, even within, you know, with one, one office or even within one computer, you could, you know, use three different sensors. You could use a DEXA sensor, a plan mecha sensor, and a Schick sensor all from the same computer. Most offices wouldn't do that, but you, we would have that capability. So again, the flexibility and the open architecture really uh, you know, gives you the choice to pick what's best for you, whether that's based on price, quality, um, you know, you know, you, uh, you got a good, good deal from your, uh, your local rep, whatever the case may be. Yeah, I think it's, I think that open architecture and that direct integration are two phrases that people really should look for when they're looking to, to optimize. I think that's, that's the key there, right? And yeah. I appreciate you guys explaining what that yeah. is. Because unfortunately for me, I do not understand that geek speak. I know nothing. Imaging is not my strong suit. Hence why I rely on you two gentlemen to help me out there. <laughs> But clinically, though, I mean, that's that, those are those are key points that providers are always looking for. Definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. And here we have an example of, uh, you know, what we call a layout or, or a full mouse series. So um, we have customizable layouts uh, throughout uh, Tiger View. So you can edit them. You can add your own. Um, obviously, your standards are two byte wing, four byte wing full mouse series, et cetera. But again, it you know, automatically uh, um, shows you the layout, automatically adjusts the orientation based on which tooth you're um, selecting, and also will automatically um, um, rotate them and also apply the tooth numbers based on uh, which actually that you're taking. So again, very easy to set up uh, um, layouts and very easy to acquire using those layouts. Now, when we're talking about uh, acquiring, say, into a four byte wing layout, again, you can have a separate button for uh, every device. So if you have a Gendex sensor, you click on the acquire from Gendex. If you have a DEXA sensor, you click on acquire from Gendex. Dexas, and then you're able to either do a single x-ray, um, a set of two byte wings, a set of four byte wings. It's all selectable from that same acquisition window. So it's very easy to take uh, um, your x-rays. You're not having to go back and forth between multiple screens and make, making a lot of different clicks. So it's a very easy, uh, um, you know, intuitive uh, way to you know, present. Now, um, um, that's kind of what we wanted to talk about as far as the clinical side of things. Um, I believe, Maria, you uh, wanted to share some of your thoughts uh, about some of the administrative functionality uh, with cloud-based imaging systems. Right, so just to let you know, administratively, 
it's, it works out so well. You can share your images with your patients and other providers. Once again, we talk about it's being HIPAA compliant and integrates well as you know, within CareStag and patient portal, it's, it's, it's easy to share out via linked, uh, linked emails. And also that ease of use, um, like I said, again, remotely, like that provider, in the beaches of Hawaii and was able to take care of that patient that was having pain in a patient in, in a doctor's chair. It also reduces maintenance and cost of cloud-based imaging and storage. So once again, like for those that are using attachments like NEA attachments, so much easier to, to attach that to the claim and send it off into the clouds. And for those of you who don't know, Maria does bring the operational background. I know we have some new people that are joining us today. She does come from the operations space for a DSL on the East Coast. So we like to think she knows what she's talking about <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes. Most of the time. So uh, wrapping, things, wrapping things up here, uh, you know, some of the key takeaways that we uh, want to make sure that you guys, uh, you know, leave with today is, you know, number one, you know, the fact that cloud imaging gives you access to all of your images, all of your data from anywhere, anywhere that's connected to the internet, you have access to, to all that information at your fingertips, whether that's on your iPhone or on an iPad or on a, on a, on a laptop, it doesn't matter. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Dwayne, and, and really that my big takeaway there would be I, that direct integration that I think is so important when you when you set up these cloud systems and having that direct view and access to images in the patient's chart in your practice management software, not having to toggle between two different softwares uh, that really weren't meant to work together. That direct integration to me is really really the the main thing to to really look look for when you're looking to optimize. It'll also eliminate the need to have and maintain a server in your practice. You know, that's definitely very helpful um, if you're moving forward and, and, and also being chartless. Um, just to let you guys know about that, uh, I think you, Dwayne and Alan, you've, you've, you've let us know the advantages, as you say. Great. And of course, it takes off that the legal obligation off your guys' shoulders and it transfers it on to like those big players, IBM, Amazon, Microsoft, Azure. And you, at that point, you're remaining HIPAA compliant because if the last thing I know, the last thing I want to receive is a $250,000 fine, I would never wish that upon anyone, not even my worst enemy. So it will take that legal obligation off of you guys. And those are the key takeaways. You can take a screenshot. If you guys want to hold up your phone, whatever it may be. Alan, Dwayne, we appreciate you being here and providing so much useful and helpful information and kind of clarifying what the differences are between the cloud and a server, cloud-hosted, cloud-based, and of course, all of the benefits pertaining to it. Our pleasure. Uh, there is, there yeah, is one, yeah, there is one question somebody had asked, um, you know, does it take so much bandwidth to upload images? If yeah, my, right. yeah, if, if my, um, I think the server, well, they're probably obviously gonna be in the cloud. So you can't use your server, but in the cloud, you know, what's the speed, I guess, of uploading the images? Yeah, so I mean, basically, when when you're capturing the images, again, it's going to be stored on that local folder immediately. And then as soon as it's stored in that local folder, they're automatically queued to our cloud uploader. So the uploader is running, you know, 24 seven, um, as soon as the, uh, you know, images in the in the uh, folder, it uploads it immediately. So I usually tell people, within one to two minutes. It's probably more like 15 to 20 seconds. It's, a, it's available in the cloud. But I like to, you know, you know, you know, a promise, promise low and deliver high uh, is, is kind of my motto is uh, I'd rather uh, you know, exceed the expectations than under exceed them. Dwayne, just for like a ballpark for everyone, what would be the recommended like megabytes per second up and down? Yeah, I mean, I think I mean the the better the better the internet, the quicker things are going to going to go for everything. And again, it also depends on how many computers that you're going to have in the office. If you only have five computers, you could probably get you know have something that's you know a ten meg uh, internet connection. If you're going to have twenty computers, um, you probably want to have something uh, you know around the thirty meg connection. Marie, does do you think that answers the question then? Yes. Perfect. And in my experience, Nicole, just to speak to that further, most people in their business, inter standard business internets are getting much quicker speeds than, than 30 megs. I think Dwayne would probably agree with that. Um, so speed requirements most of the time are actually uh, 
the requirements are actually relatively low, you know, so bandwidth generally, uh, like Dwayne said, it did really have a lot to do with how many computers, but uh, generally aren't, aren't usually an issue in those cases. Correct. All right, Jackie, let's go. Once again, that, that, that concludes our ninth series of From the Ground Up. We hope you all enjoyed it. I want to say a huge thank you to Dwayne Anderson from Tiger View and Alan Cirilli, our imaging expert at CareStack. Also, thank you for my co-moderator, Nicole. It's always fun doing these things with you. So I um, want to encourage our audience to reach out to Dwayne and Alan if you have further questions on cloud-based imaging and imaging altogether, basically. I know that they will gladly take your calls or email. And, and hey, everyone, um, we're excited to have Maritza Duran. So if you can go to the next slide there, Jackie. Our next From the Ground Up series is Thursday, April 21st, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard. Um, we're going to have a featured guest speaker, Marissa Duran. She's our consultant from M Dent Consulting, and she's going to talk about how to become profitable as a first-time practice owner. She's she's been there, done that, and have guided and coached providers from the ground up. So until next time, we'll see you again April 21st, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thanks.